So now we're going to look at a model plate that's stronger than the bubble wrap but weaker than the rigid plastic material. So we're going to use foam rubber. So now we have a long piece of foam rubber here. Just let it settle down a bit. Now the thing has slightly got a shape of its own, but we're, we, we won't be too influenced by that. What we're going to see are actual dynamic effects due to loading it there. But basically that's more or less, more or less flat there. So now we'll take the same weight, you'll recognize this weight, and place it on. And the story now is literally intermediate between the rigid plate and the uh, bubble wrap. Now actually as we watch this it is actually evolving through time and the reason is that the weight has pushed the plate downwards and water is flowing in. Now in this experiment actually the water is now playing two parts in this play. So the water down here is actually the mantle but the water up here could be actual water. It could be the sea flowing in around this mountain belt because that's actually what happens. Now, I'll, let me just talk you through what's happening here before I add any more weight. So, can you see that there's a root? But if you look at the, the width of the weight is that width, but the root is much wider than that. The root is going from about here to, to there. So this is what we call non-local compensation. It just means that the weight is being held over a large area. Now, a consequence of that is what you can see here is that the land has actually bent downwards so although the mountain belt is sticking up the land has gone down and this is what we find in real mountain belts what you actually find is a depressed area nearby and that depressed area could be flooded by the sea or it could receive input from rivers and sediment can build up there so if i had some sand i could throw it in here and that would be illustrating the development of a fallen basin so around the Alps today, the, the Alps now are above sea level and the surroundings are above sea level. But if you were in Geneva, maybe 50 million years ago or 30 million years ago, it would have been below sea level for this reason. OK, so this sort of idea helps us explain the real world and the width of this basin and the depth of the route is controlled not just by the density of the plate, but by its elastic properties as well. So you don't just find it round mountain belts formed by continental collision. You find it round the island of Hawaii. Hawaii is a large object sticking, resting on the ocean floor in the Pacific Ocean. And Hawaii is sticking out above sea level, like this rock. But around it, the ocean floor is actually deeper than usual because of this, what we call flexia. This is the plate flexing. So before I add another weight, because I might then flood the model too much, there's one other thing here that needs to be noted, and it's more subtle. But watch, look at the topography here. Now, we've got a route there, but actually, as we come this way, we've got a slightly raised part, and then it goes down to its equilibrium level. So what you've got then is a consequence of this elasticity is you've got this depression here, which is wider than the actual weight of the rock, the rock that's causing the, the loading. And then you've got this slight upward bulge there, and it's called a peripheral bulge because it's at the edge of them, the, the area that's being affected, and it's a bulge, so it's called the peripheral bulge. And over on this side, you can perhaps see another one. In this model, they're a bit subtle, but they are real effects in this experiment and in nature. Okay. So there's the peripheral bulge. So what we'll do next is we'll, with some caution, just see if we can make the whole model a bit more extreme. And you can see I'm doing it carefully because I really might flood the model and the water itself is providing extra weight and it might run away, but I think we're just about all right there. But now you can see both effects are more extreme. There's a bigger basin there's a bigger fallen basin there at the side. And then there's a peripheral bulge that's quite big. Now, can you see what's happened? Actually, this is a lesson on how the earth works. That when I add the weight, the extra weight, the bottom went down. So I didn't get as much height as the, the rock was intended to give. But in this model, 
the water got in in such a lively way that it provided some more weight. And this actually comes into play in nature as well. When you actually model these fallen basins, you have to take the weight of water into account. But that's, that's, that's a partial explanation of how ideas of buoyancy that are everyday concepts actually um, apply to the earth. Now, can you see now I've flooded it all a bit more. So we've got, uh, this thing is now below sea level. But what I want us to do is watch what happens as I remove the weight. Now, something fairly obvious is going to happen, which is the route goes up. Now, this might be a bit like erosion. Yeah, if you're going to erode your mountain belt, the route goes up. Okay. Now, it's got a bit of memory in this, right? It's, it's a bit saturated water. It's got a bit of memory, but basically it's going up, isn't it? But let's do it one more time. And this time I want us to look at the peripheral bulge. So there's my load again. There's my peripheral bulge. We'll just see if we can make it a bit bigger just for demonstration. I'm even going to hold on to this now. Just make it a bit of extra weight. There's the peripheral bulge. As I remove the weight, that actually subtly goes down. And that's a bit more difficult to see in this model, but it is a real effect. Let me try and lift that off gently. It's going down as this part goes up. Okay. Now, what relevance does that have? What, when would we be removing loads? Well, by erosion we would be. So the erosion here is having effects out here. But perhaps a more um, British example is melting an ice sheet. So the ice sheet has a weight. So the ice sheet, which was focused on Scotland during the last ice age, pushed Scotland down. And as Scotland bounced back as the ice melted, you get every now and then there's a little pause and the sea has time to carve a beach. But then as the ice melts some more, the beach gets lifted up above sea level and they're called raised beaches. They're all around Scotland. Okay. So the raised beaches you see around the, the shorelines of Scotland are a result of this isostatic rebound. We've lost the ice, so we're getting rebound. But if this is Scotland, over here is East Anglia. So as I remove the weight, I'll just use my hand here actually. As I remove the weight from Scotland, Scotland goes up, but East Anglia is kind of in the area of the peripheral bulge and it's going down a bit and actually East Anglia really is subsiding and it's partly a result of this there are other geological things going on okay remember this is nothing to do with global sea level change this is just the the British plate or the, the British part of the European plate bouncing back after the ice sheets melted so here's Scotland going up here's East Anglia going down you can explain all that with the ideas of buoyancy and a rather rigid plate.